curiosity is the most important thing. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it sounds really weird to say, but you mean like leadership lessons, you know, I learned leadership lessons just from walking in the park and just observing nature and the sun's relationship with nature and relationship with the moon and the sun understanding when to be present and when to go away, right? Because as a teammate, it was like, dude, the sun's out all damn long. You're going to sunburn a hell of a lot of people, right? So if I'm playing this game and I'm on top of my guys for 48 minutes, dude, you're going to sunburn every single teammate there, right? right? So there's certain times it was important for the sun to be present. There's other times it needs to go away. Right, and, um, but they're, they're life lessons that surround us at all times, and uh, I've, I've always been extremely, extremely curious about those. Things. I mean, I was I was extremely fortunate to have him because we'd sit together and we'd watch film of every game, and um, the first time we sat down and watched film, I was kind of like, "All right, we're going to watch my touches, all right? We're going to watch my touches," and da da da. No, we watched the game from start to finish. Winding it, looking at plays, looking at tactics, start to finish. Every game, every game. We're watching the start of the game oh my to gosh. the end of the game. And not like, not like the TV feed, we're watching the in arena feed. The layup line, the timeouts. Oh my gosh. Yeah, rewinding, stopping, fast forward, rewinding, slow motion, every little thing every game of that season with the 82-year-old Yoda. Oh my gosh. <laughs> who is as brutally honest as you can get. What did that teach you that season? Oh, it te taught me to look at detail. Mm. Right, look at thing things at their smallest, right? Look at body language, you know? Um, um, look at the energy between players, our team and the other team. Wow. Right, look at the tactics. You know, look at the overall strategy and they'll look at how tactically things are manifesting themselves. And because I watched so much film, then it gave me the ability to see game in real time as if I was watching film. Wow. Where I can see pop, 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 pop. Because a lot of times the game starts moving really fast. But if you train yourself to watch hours and hours of film, the game's not moving that fast anymore. You can really recognize who's doing what and why. Then you can position guys in the right places in real time. What I observed a lot of my career is how players study film. Because right, now it's become like you watch game film and you see what you do right, you see what you do wrong. Okay, let's do more of that, let's do less of that, right? But the way I grew up from Tex Winter, Phil Jackson, the way film was broken down, it was broken down to the smallest detail. It was broken down to the right angle. It was broken down to foot placement, timing, um, looking at the posture of a teammate. You know, what could he be thinking? What could he be feeling? Same thing with the opposition. You know, you watch the feed, watch players go into the timeouts, who's talking to who, who's not talking. You, you start looking at every little thing. And so watching the game for me would take like five hours. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's an obsessiveness that comes along with it. You want things to be as perfect as they can be. Understanding that nothing is ever perfect. But the challenge is try to get them as perfect as they can be. Mm -hmm. And what can you do? It's in your control. So control what you can. Yeah. I can watch film all day long. It's going to help me. Get better. Yes. Yeah. Player coming into the league today, I would really focus on the defensive end of the floor and look at Scottie Pippen. I mean, this guy was a genius. His ball pressure, playing passing lanes, blocking shots, taking charges, and he played with a passion on the defensive end of the floor. Like, no, this is the most exciting part of the game to me. All right, so here again, Scotty is initiating the action. He's making Mark work to bring the ball up the floor, okay? That's one. Now, where he's pushing him, he's pushing him into situations where Mark can't really attack. Right here, you got Michael sitting here waiting, right? That area is clogged up. There's nowhere for him to go. So Scotty's fully aware of that, so he knows you can put a lot of pressure on him in these areas because there's nowhere for him to drive. And so now, where is Mark looking, right? He's looking for these curl actions here. Yeah, he couldn't run the play. Right, Scotty took the play away from him. Here he cuts the angle off. Now Mark says, okay, I gotta attack him. He's bodying up on me, I'm gonna attack him. Mark attacks him here. But now Scotty, you know, sensing that Mark wants to feel the contact, right? Cause Scotty's been bodying him this whole time. So now Mark seeks the contact and Scotty just backs up. Scotty just backs up. I mean, that, that's just brilliant defense. 
I mean, think about that for a second. I mean, he, he's bodying Mark the whole game, body him, body him, body him. Now Mark's looking for the, for Scotty's body, and Scotty just just moves back and lets Mark lose his balance. I mean, that's a game of cat and mouse right there. Okay, again, you know, Scotty's making the reads. He knows this action. Right, he knows it. Here it is. He knows the ball comes back there. He knows they're looking for Starks coming off of a double screen on the weak side. So he tries to get his hand in that passing lane. He misses it. But this shows me that he is keenly aware of the actions that are taking place out here on the floor, which means he prepares. So if I'm this draft pick coming into the league, I know I got to do my homework. You know, homework could give you all the answers, right? Scotty knows what's coming there. Right now... <laughs> This is unbelievable. Look at all the ground this guy covers. Here, down, there. All right, but it's the activity. You know, he plays defense with an energy. You know, too many players today play defense just to play defense. He's attacking these offensive players. He's going after it. He's playing with an energy out there. If I can learn how to cut angles off like Scotty, be aggressive on the defensive end of the floor like Scotty, I think that'll just take my game and the team that drafts me to an entirely different level. Detail, if I'm LeBron James and if I'm Kevin Durant, I'm looking for areas on the floor where I can attack in one, two dribble pull-up situations. Get to the spot before defenses can key on me and lock in on me and operate quickly. another great opportunity right there now this is the right pass to make it's the right pass to make no doubt about it he's open I just threw it off target but what I also have are these pull up jump shots I mean it, my size and my body keeps the defense off balance I mean look at Bell here he's completely turned around All right, I can stop on a dime and pull up and shoot that jumper right there All right one, two dribble pull-ups. Yeah, I can do one, two dribble pull-ups all series long. All series long. There, there, stop, pop. This is where I can make a living. These actions right here. These quick pin downs, catching and shooting, right? One dribble, stop, pop. Right? The more I have to play with the ball, the more deep Cleveland's defense can lock in on me. But these actions here... Bang, bang. I mean, that's, that's easy money. You know, I gotta be looking for these here. I shouldn't be looking to score when I'm handling the ball away from the rim. If I gotta bounce the ball three, four, or five times, that's where Cleveland's defense can load up. If I'm looking to get buckets, I gotta get buckets off of action like this. With the size that KD has the size that LeBron has, they'll be able to elevate over any double team and shoot that shot and not have to go all the way into the basket and deal with trees and charges and no foul calls. But get to those spots and pull up for that jumper. This episode of Detail, I'm really focused on Kevin Love reading defensive situations early to be able to pull over early and help on KD's drives, be able to stay in front of shooters when I switch out to Steph Curry and contest high, making sure I'm pushing them into drive, using my left hand as a form of attack to contest shots, and not letting the shooter get any airspace to be able to pull up and shoot those deep threes that they're so known for. Contest that with the left. Contest that with the left hand. This shot right here, going across and contesting it with the right. That's an easy opportunity for a ref to call a foul, but it also gives KD space to be able to shoot, right? It gives him room to be able to shoot. Now, if I use my left arm instead of the right, as KD is going up, now my left hand goes up and my left hand is on the side of his view and on the side of that ball. That is more bothersome for shooters because you're right there in their line of sight. Coming with the right hand does nothing. KD can see it right in front of him. He can measure that distance. That's an easy shot for shooters. But coming along the side of their face and the side of that ball, now that makes them uncomfortable because they can't really tell that distance. Ah, there it is again. That's a great job, right? 
So I have great confidence now because I've done this before. I've done this in really, really hard situations where I'm all the way out here. I mean, I'm in deep water right now with Steph. I'm above the hash mark and I'm trying to play this kid one on one. Right. And here I am staying with him. LeBron's in great help position. Right. And I stay on his shooting shoulder. Right. I stay on his shooting shoulder. I'm pushing him in the drive. And then there's the left hand right there. Left hands right on top of that shooters uh, line of sight. And uh, that bothers shooters, man. Now, I'm sure they'll make adjustments, but, you know, it's my responsibility to say, all right, well, make your adjustment. <laughs> I'm not just going to let you shoot the ball like how you normally shoot it every, all game long. You're going to have to make an adjustment. But that's good D right there. So in this episode, I'm really, really focused on plugging the lane, getting the help early, and contesting high with a left hand on shooters. The episode of Detail... I would really look at defending the ball more aggressively or having a clear direction or focus of where I want to push the ball handler. Too many times I'm giving direct line drives to ball handlers and I'm putting our defense in jeopardy. All right, this is a threatening position. They say on those uh, shark shows when the shark's swimming with his fins down, you know he's in an attack position, right? You know, James is not backing his ball up, right? He's staying in an attack position here. So you know this is a threatening posture. And so to move closer to him does nothing but put us in jeopardy because from here he's going to attack. And now I'm opening up that tight turn again to get to that basket. See, if he turns the corner like that, then, you know, Iguodala, I mean, there's nothing he can do. I'm giving him a straight line to that basket. So when, I, when he's here in this position here, I have to be able to force him if you drew an imaginary line between me and Iguodala, that's the angle where I need to push Harden. I cannot allow him to turn this corner. If he dips this shoulder and turns this corner, we're done, right? And me trying to hold him there with my right hand, that, that is, that's not going to do anything with this guy. I mean, he's going to go right through that. He's looking to attack me, right? So I got a cushion again, same thing. Get off my heels, cushion. Where am I sending him? Right? But again, this is a direct line drive. Right? This is a direct line drive. I got to be able to guard him. You know, these teams need to know that they're not just going to be able to just isolate me and have something positive come out of it. I have to be able to guard this player and force him to help. Right? Not allow him to just simply turn the corner and do this. I need to be able to hold my ground defensively. I need to be mindful of where the help is. And I need to be mindful of how to push the ball handler in the direction of where that help is and prohibit him from turning the corner quickly, which you know makes the weak side help inconsequential. consequential. <laughs>